So I'm doing this video in response to a comment I received about my six month review of the TurboSound IP500. And the comment was basically asking me if I had ever added a subwoofer to the system to augment the bass a little bit. And my usual thoughts when you buy a column array system, you know, you kind of get what you get. You're not gonna, it's not designed to be scalable. You know, you're not buying a separate subwoofer, a separate top. But as I started to type out my comment, I started to think, okay, well, the IP500 is pretty small, so you know maybe we could add a subwoofer to it. So, because because typically, if if you had like say an IP2000 with a 12-inch woofer, eh, you still could maybe do it. It probably wouldn't work as well though. But uh, basically, my thoughts are this: you never mix and match subwoofers, mostly because you know they hit at different points, different size subwoofers. It's just it's, it's not how you build an audio system. You know, there's, there's, you know, you can run into cancellation issues, phase issues with the subs. It just, you open up a whole, whole ball of worms if you're mixing and matching an 8-inch sub and a 15-inch sub or a, you know, 15-inch sub and an 18-inch sub. It's just, it's, it's not, not a can of worms you really want to open. It, it might work, but you're not going to get as good a sound as you, as you probably could. But then, so my thoughts with the IP500 was the subwoofer that's built in is only an 8-inch subwoofer. So what if we did use an 18-inch subwoofer, and then, you know, we activated the 100 hertz crossover, so the 18-inch the sub is taking all the bass, 100 hertz and below, and then we're just sending 100 hertz and above to the... IP500s, and they've only got eights in them anyway, so they don't hit that low to begin with. So, really, we're not we're not doing much. We're just adding bass and maybe cutting out the real low lows. Because, as I said in my previous video, you get really punchy bass out of these, like up around like 80 hertz or so. I'd maybe try to cross them over a little lower if possible, but the subwoofer I have automatically has a 100 hertz crossover built in, so I had to go with that. And I actually have it set up out here. I'll show you my setup really fast. I don't have a cameraman, so I'm moving the camera myself. Let's see here. Sorry for the walk on that. I uh, probably will not edit out any of that walking, mostly because I, I just don't have time. This week's really busy, so I'm just going to post this video as is. But it actually sounds pretty good. It worked. It worked pretty well. Um, you know, would I recommend using a uh, DAS Audio Bantec 18A 1500 watt subwoofer with it? Probably not. I think a 15 inch would probably work better and sound maybe a little better with, with the, the IP500s, but you know, I would definitely do this and I think it, it definitely bumps up what you're capable of doing with the IP500. You know, at the end of the day, you're still not going to put out more than, I think it's what, 100 and 118 decibels. So the high end's not going to get any higher, but you are going to be able to fill out the low end and if you're doing a small wedding dance, I think it would work quite well. My first instinct, because I did like this setup, was to go out and buy the IP15B, I think the model is. It's the, in the Inspire series, they've got a 12 inch subwoofer that you can add like two satellite speakers to. And then just recently, I think within the last year, they came out with a 15 inch version of that. And my first thought, because the price point's so good at it, well, I'll have a matching system and just, just buy the IP15B. But I am going to tell you right now, do not buy the IP15B. I scoured the manuals and it does have, it looks like in, in the menu it has a user selectable, user selectable crossover built into the IP15B, but from scouring the manual it looks like that crossover only affects the speak on outputs to the satellite speakers 
The actual XLR outputs are just throughputs, which means any of the processing that you select in, in the menu system will not go out of that. It's, it's a pre-processing. Pre so that would not work well for comboing. I would have liked it to have worked because I probably would have picked one up had had the uh, XLR outs been processed as well, or had the option to have processing on them. Because I, you know, as you've heard from my other videos, I like to have match systems. So I don't want to bring out the IP 500s with a DAS sub. Will I now? Yeah, I will because there's there's nothing really to to match them with. I suppose I could buy a different turbo sound speaker, but. The IP15B had the right price point. I'm not gonna go out and spend a thousand dollars on a sub just to have with with the IP500. So probably if it comes down to it, I'll just use one of our single 18s with it. Maybe just I don't know, lay it on its side and hide it under a table or something. But uh, yeah, to answer that the the commenter's question, it, it does work quite well. Um, I did notice listening to it. And, and maybe it's just because of how low the 18-inch sub hits. It almost sounded like I had a had a smiley face EQ curve going, and I have no processing whatsoever going on it. It's just you definitely hear the high end out of the IP500s, and you definitely feel the thump out of an 18-inch sub. So maybe a 15-inch might balance it a little bit more, maybe. Um... But with DJ music, feeling thump and high end, I mean that's typically the typically the name of the game. A lot of people scoop their mids, so here you're you're already pre-scooped, so you're good to go. Uh, I, I did think that the eight inch would maybe pick up, since it wasn't doing anything under a hundred hertz. I thought maybe the eight inch would pick up just a little bit more of the the mid frequencies, but you know realistically that the systems crossed over where it's crossed over and I, I don't know where exactly that is it might be at 200 Hertz so then if you cross over use an external sub and you're taking 100 Hertz and blowout and putting it into this into the sub the 8 inch is still only getting 100 Hertz to 200 Hertz so it's only hitting that select select band there I think it'd be a little too much to ask to have the internal crossover user adjustable to bring it up a notch a little too much to ask because it is an all-in-one system it's not designed to be used with an external sub but it definitely is possible just make sure that you're crossing it over don't don't run full range into the IP 500 and don't uh, you know run 100 Hertz below into the sub because if you're trying to push the same frequencies into both subs that that can cause issues I'll actually, I, I didn't do it, but I, I'm actually going to go out and turn the, I'll turn the crossover off on the sub and run full range into the IP500s and have it just as an add-on subwoofer. And I'll probably go in and out. I'm not going to record it. I'll do it after I shut the camera off here. But I will comment in, in, the, in the video and say whether or not I noticed a difference or not. I don't necessarily think anybody will notice an audible difference, but it's just weird things happen when you do audio incorrectly. You know, you, you might not hear anything up front, but you could get weird comb filtering in the bass frequencies throughout the room where all of a sudden here it's bassy, oh, there you got no bass, oh, here it's bassy again. And you just, and, and I don't know if comb filtering would happen with this. I don't know the actual outcome. Um, you know, you could you could run it through uh, through some audio processing, I suppose, if they had uh, like ease focus. But I don't think they have ease focus files for for any of the speakers we're using right now. So that's that's probably going to be a no go. But you never know what kind of issues you might run into. You might not hear them right away, but they might might be noticeable somewhere else in the room. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. I will comment about whether I heard an audible difference in going in and out. My recommendation is to use a crossover on the two if you're going to do it, though. Alright, have a good day.